Okay, Jean-Jacques Rousseau's um, social contract. Um, let's let's take a look at that. So in 1762, uh, he elaborates his sort of political philosophy and uh, a sort of axiom, a first principle. You know, like like the way that um, that. Uh, Immanuel Kant talked about like first principles, like the Newton's laws of motion. Um, Rousseau has a sort of axiom that he assumes up front. This is his basic premise: is that um, that uh, the human to be free should tend to a state of nature as much as possible. So you want to tend to a state of nature as much as possible. That's the goal. That's what liberty means, is to get as close to a state of nature as possible. And then he just sort of uh, uh, unfolds that idea. And he says, uh, this is a quote, let us then admit that force does not create right and that we are obliged to obey only legitimate Powers. Okay, so this is very similar to what uh, John Locke was saying about um, the legitimate power of a legislator or, or executive, and um, and so what is it that makes that makes a, a, a power over us? You know, what, what makes it legitimate uh, when we give up some of our liberty? to a higher power, what makes that power legitimate? Okay. Um, now, one idea that he develops is that rights and obligations are equal to all. That uh, if I have a right, then everyone has a right. And if I have an obligation, then everybody has the same obligation. Again, very similar to, to Locke. Um, so any abdication of a right or uh, a right or obligation um, is a divergence from a, an original equality where everyone has the same rights and responsibilities. And uh, the dedication of the book reads uh, Poetitoris Aquius Dicamus Legis, uh, Agreement of Equality, Say the Laws. Right, we agree to equality. That's that's the basis of the law. So, property, and again, we're thinking of like real property, the enclosure of the commons, is legitimate only if uh, it's originally uninhabited. It's used merely for subsistence, and the owner puts labor into it. Adds labor, very similar to. John Locke. So we get this um, this notion, but but now uh, Locke does go through machinations in order to make the accumulation of property either in the form of gold wealth or money wealth or in the form of land uh, to somehow legitimate that. Rousseau is saying, you know, if it wasn't originally uninhabited when you got it, and if you're if you're enclosing land beyond what you need to merely keep yourself alive and your family, um, then that's not legitimate. And if you don't labor on it yourself, then it's not legitimate. So he's uh, he finds property by and large illegitimate property as we know it. Um, and he does have a form of the social contract, and this is the main focus of the book, is that the people, uh, and, and so he has some concepts here, the social contract is based on a, the sovereignty of the people, of the general populace. And, um, and we'll see this uh, notion of sovereignty of the people come up in Dussel quite heavily. He has a very similar idea uh, about 
the social contract uh, Ducel does, Enrique Ducel. So uh, we, we, we want to draw some connections here between Rousseau and Ducel. And, and uh, even for the, the final paper, that might be something that you might want to look into is actually read Rousseau's uh, social contract. It's not a big book. Um, and it's freely available on Gutenberg.org. Uh, I believe that it's available there. If if not there, I can I can find a there are copies out there online that are readily available. Um, but uh, you know it would be interesting to compare uh, to do an essay, which would be appropriate uh, to compare Rousseau and Dussel, and then see how. Um, in comparing them, how does that help you to, uh, how might those ideas help in a liberatory movement today? Um, okay, so we have a sovereign people. So sovereignty is really something that belongs to the people and the people have a common will there is what Dussel calls a consensus understanding, and um, and uh, Rousseau calls it a common will, which is a very, a very important concept uh, within uh, socialism as it develops over the next century after after Rousseau. All right. Um, Government institutions are supposed to serve the people, you know, not the other way around, and, and to act in accordance with the common will of the people. And if that is not happening, then the people should abolish any government uh, that doesn't follow this, this structure. So, uh, so he is advocating a, a revolutionary sort of understanding of, of government where most governments would be illegitimate and would need to be abolished through the revolution of the, the common people, of commoners um, against the, the hierarchical powers, whatever they might be. Uh, and one general idea that's that's in here is that uh, larger societies require more authoritarian government, and and he has established that authoritarianism is illegitimate. Uh, so as people congregate into larger communities, they it, the organization of larger communities requires more authoritarianism, all to the way to the point of absolute monarchy or or dictatorial authoritarianism of some sort. And so, uh, and, and that's somewhat legitimated if people want to live in large societies, they have to give up lots of freedom, but then that undermines the legitimacy of the authority. You know, so he doesn't really see that as a, as a great thing, uh, although he does come a long way to legitimating it. But then uh, really what he suggests is that people congregate in smaller societies. And of course, the absolute freedom would just to be a lone wanderer of the earth. If you could remain unmolested, that's, that's the problem with things nowadays is that uh, it's difficult to just, to just walk the earth and be freely accepted uh, wherever you might land and, and be able to just move on without, without people harassing you. But uh, but at least the, the smaller of a society that you can make, the more in tune with nature, the more directly connected to nature, the less uh, of a complex society that you have, then uh, that is getting you as much liberty as conceivably possible. And so uh, less is more uh, sort of thinking, the smaller the society, the better in general terms, the larger the site of society, the worse. Okay, so, um, so there's some interesting ideas there. And this all fits in very much with utopian socialism, like Owen's utopian socialism, making smaller societies so that you don't have as much hierarchy and people are more free to 
have leisure in their life, especially leisure to be in contact with nature and and have you know some quiet time and isolation time, uh, you know, to themselves. All right, so that's Rousseau. 